to give you, Lord, all the honor, to give you all the glory, to acknowledge that it's you, Father, it's all you and none of us, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your love and kindness. We thank you, Lord, that you're God. And beside you, Father, there is no other God. We thank you this morning, Father, that we look to you, Lord, with great expectation, Lord. We look to you, Lord, to do exceedingly and abundantly, Lord, more than we can ask, say, or think, Lord God. We look to you this morning, Lord. We look to you this morning, Father God, to be big in our lives, Lord God, to do big things in our lives, Lord. We look to you this morning, Father. Our expectation, our hope, Lord, is in you, Father. He who made the heaven and the earth, he who hung them all in their boundaries, Lord. We look to you this morning, Father. We thank you this morning, Father, that your word tells us that you are mindful of, of us, that you are concerned about us, Father God. And we're so thankful, Lord God, that you are concerned about us, Lord. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, that we are your handmaidens this morning, Father. We're your sons and we're your daughters, Father. Made in your very image, Lord God. Made to be like you, Father. We thank you this morning, Father. And we welcome your presence here, Lord God, in this sanctuary, Lord. We welcome you here this morning, Father. Have your way, Father God. Sit upon our hearts, Lord God. Join us in our praise and our thanksgiving to you, Father. Oh, that's so awesome, Lord. You live on in the side of us. We praise you and you join in with our praise and thanksgiving of you. Hallelujah. You say you stand watch over your word to perform your word and cause your word to come to pass in our lives, Lord. Oh, you're so awesome this morning, Father. You're awesome every day, Lord. And we are thankful, Father. We are so thankful, Lord. Father God, we thank you for the service to, today. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, nothing is too hard for you. Lord, we pray right now first for our sound and media area. Holy Spirit, we just ask right now, right now, Lord, you come and whatever malfunction, whatever uh, disconnect there might be, I know that you can do all things. You can do all things but fail. So, Holy Spirit, we invite you to work through the airways, the sound waves, and, and remove all the glitches and remove all the malfunction. Right now, by the power of Almighty God, we command it so. And we thank you for the hands that are at work. Lord God, in that area, Father, we thank you that you will regulate their minds and, and uh, work through their fingers, Lord God, that they will work and function, Lord God, as you would have them to in the name of Jesus. Go to our sound and media area right now, Father God. Hover over that place, Lord, in Jesus' name. Bind down and tear down anything, Lord God, that shouldn't be there. Covered with the blood of Jesus, Lord. We thank you for that right now, Lord. We believe it so, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Father. In the mighty, masterless name of Jesus. We thank you for the uh, praise and worship service. We thank you, Father God, that as they praise your name, Lord God, as they give you praise, Lord God, it will further steal the enemy. It will further back up any malfunctioning that, that might try to come forth this morning. The praise steal the enemy, and I believe it so this morning in the name of Jesus. Satan is a liar. He's the father of liars, and we command him to get the hell out of our service in the name of Jesus. You are not welcome. You are trespassing, and we command you to leave 
Now, in the name of Jesus, you are not welcome here. Only the spirit of the living God rest, rule, and abide here in this place. Henceforth, now and forever. And Lord, we give you all the praise. We thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. We thank you for the preached word as it would go forth, Lord God, in power and in might, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. We give you, Father, all the honor. We give you all the glory. We thank you that the word will come forth and fall on hearts and minds that are receptive, Lord God. Hearts and minds that will receive, Father. Hearts and minds that will take the word and run with it, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you. Thank you for the children church area, Lord God. We pray, Father God, for the little kids that... We thank you for the teachers, Lord God. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you will cause the children, Lord God, to receive your word in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Receive all the honor. Receive all the glory. Receive all the praise. Father, we praise you. We praise you this morning, Lord. We praise you with all our instruments. We praise your name, Lord. We praise you, Father. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Father. Receive it this morning, Lord God. Receive our praise. Receive our thanks. Receive our honor this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name. Receive it, Father. Lord, receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you're God. Thank you, Lord God, that your goodness and your mercy endures forever. Thank you, Lord God, that you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you, Lord God, that you don't change. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name for life. Father, we bless you. We praise you. We give you honor. We speak the word of God over this place. Lord, the blessing of Almighty God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, thank you, that Lord. these instruments are blessed of you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that they are highly favored of you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, Lord. You don't change. You are God. Lord, you're God. You're God all by yourself. And you are able to do all things, Father. And we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord God. It is so. In Jesus' name, Lord, it is so. And we give you all the thanks, all the honor, all the glory. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord.
Come on, y'all help me out. Huh? I'm able to do just what he said.
is only one day. At the mention of your name, Father God, the atmosphere shifts. So we call upon your name this morning, oh God. 
King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you for redeeming us, Father God, for sending your only begotten Son, him shedding his blood, O oh God, and making us free, free from the law of sin and death, O oh God, and free, O oh God, in you to have eternal life. So, Father, you are the reason why we lift our hands. You are the reason why we lift our voices. You are the reason, oh God, that we have movement in our bodies. So we give it all to you this morning, oh God, with everything that we have. Oh, we render it all to you, oh God. Have your way in us today, Father. Have your way through us, Father God. Use our lives for your glory, oh God. Father, we thank you that you will love the unlovable through us. Oh, we thank you, oh God, that you will heal, set free, and deliver through us, oh God. Use us, oh God. We are your vessels this morning, oh God. Thank you, Father, for cleansing us, oh God, with the blood of Jesus. So we take this time, oh God, just to honor you, oh God, and just... Remember what your son Jesus has done for us. We thank you this morning. We honor you for it. In Jesus' name. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you in this place, oh God. We worship you in this place. We worship you in this place, God. We worship you in this place. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Lord. We worship you in this place. I worship you, Almighty God. That is what I long to do. I give you praise. For you are my righteousness. I worship you. Almighty God. There is none like you. Come on. There is none like you. No one can do. No one else can do the like you do. I can search all over. I can search through all eternity, Lord. And find there is none like you. Come on, sing that one again. There's none like you. Come on, let's sing it. There is none like you. No one can touch my heart like you do. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search throughout all eternity. I can search for all eternity, Lord, and find there is none. Come on, there's none. Come on. There is none. There is none. There is none. Father, we magnify your name in this place. We declare and determine that there's none like you. No one can touch our heart. No one can touch our lives like you do. No one can make the changes that are necessary like you do. Father, we can search throughout all eternity and we'll find no one like you. Thank you, Father, for taking, taking just the little we have 
God and making it into something. For our righteousness, God, was no more than filthy rags. But you, oh God, you touched our lives, God, and made us not worth less, but you made us worthy. (laughs) Hallelujah, God. We was once worthless, but you made us worthy, God. So we thank you, and today we recognize you. We recognize your power, yes, Lord. your grace, Hallelujah. your sufficient grace. We recognize it today in this place. Father, we bow our hearts before you in worship. We magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Saints, as we prepare our hearts, Not just prepare our mouths, but prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper today. I want us to read the scripture as Paul gave us instructions on the Lord's Supper. Most that have been in church for some time are familiar with the Lord's Supper. They, 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 those that uh, have been around in the old school, you may remember the pictures that used to be on the wall or the different plaques that would be on the wall and they would have the 12 disciples around and Jesus there and and, and people would say that's the Lord's Supper that was his very last supper before they crucified him well they crucified him but Paul gave us some exa- uh, 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 some instructions in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 now I want to read that because it's so important that we understand what the Lord's Supper is and what it means to our salvation and what it means to our, our very life our livelihood. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'll be reading out of the King James Version. Verse 23. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. He said, what Paul's saying that I, what I got from Jesus, I got it and I'm going to give it to you because it's highly important that you understand this. He said, what I got from Jesus, I'm going to give it to you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Verse 25 says, after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped and saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26 says, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. And then verse 27 says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Verse 28, this is the part I want to get to because this is highly important that we understand this. He says, but let a man examine himself. That's called self-examination. He's not saying go and ask the pastor what I think of you or ask your your buddy or ask your friend or ask your mommy. He said, you do a self-examination. And the self-examination is based on the word of God or the word that's already been imparted into you. Do a self-examination and you, you, know, you, you examine yourself based on the word of God, not based on man's standards, not based on what man has said, not based on what the society says. What is it that God says? Examine yourself based on what God has said. His wherefore whosoever shall eat, the, uh, verse 20, 28 again, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh Damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. He goes on in verse 30, says, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brother, when... Uh, uh, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. He's simply saying that when we do our own judgment, our self-examination, we get it right before the Lord. No one else has the, has the, the no one else can judge us because we, we've, we've examined ourselves based on God's standards and no one else has the standard. God's standard is the only standard that counts. Not, not my opinion, not your opinion, not your, your neighbor's opinion, but God's opinion. What is it that God is saying? 
And so what I like to do, I like to take an opportunity, a moment, just for anybody who feels like at this moment, at this moment in time, you feel like you're unworthy. This is the magnificent, wonderful thing about the grace of God, that if you're breathing right now, you have an opportunity to, to become worthy of the Lord's Supper. You don't have to be unworthy. It doesn't matter what you've done. There's no sin that you have committed that's greater than God's grace. And so he died on the cross, and so the work for, for, for salvation, the work for redemp redemption is already done. All we have to do is accept it. And so let's take an opportunity and let's go before the Lord. Let's pray and let's just seek his face for forgiveness. And you become worthy. Now, I don't care what your plans are after that. But for this very right, this moment, because you know what? The Bible tells us that we can't even talk about what's going to happen next. The Bible tells us that we shouldn't even plan about tomorrow because we don't even know what tomorrow has. We may not even get into tomorrow. We may not even get through this door. But right now, his grace is sufficient right now at this very moment. So let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you and we humble ourselves. We examine ourselves and we use your word as the mirror. We use your standard as our mirror. And God, we know that there are some things that we have done that, that, that probably cause you to turn the other way. But God, your word says that your grace is sufficient. And that you're able to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you're able to throw everything we've ever done that, that, that you despise, you're able to throw that into the seal of forgetfulness and to remember them ever no more. Father, we, we repent. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us, God, regardless of what they are. We don't even want to name them, God, because we don't even know some of them. We don't even know that we, we've committed them. But you know. And then there's some that we know we've committed, but our heart may be hardened. But only you, God, can change our heart, soften our heart. But it starts with us coming to you and being clean, God. We come to you, God, and we're being 100 to you, to, 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 to you, saying, God, that, that, that we are uncleansed, we're unworthy, but make us worthy today. Forgive us of our sins. And God, as you begin a work that no other man can do, in our lives today, God, do the work, Father. Help us to get to that place of standards, God, where, where you're pleased with everything we do. But right now, God, you may not be pleased, but right now you can forgive us. Right now we are forgiven. We're forgiven and we thank you. Thank you for forgiving us, Father. Thank you for setting us free. For he who the Son sets free is free indeed, God. Because we have asked for your forgiveness and because we have repented, we are now free. Free from the chains and the bondage of sin. We're free. Free from the devil's chains. We're free. And we bless you for it, Father. We thank you. We're so grateful that you've given us this one chance. This may be the one chance of many others, but you've given us this one chance today to repent and to ask for your forgiveness. And according to your word, we have been forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Those of you that are home, if you don't have the condiments that we have here, you can take whatever you have and sanctify it. Consecrate it unto the Lord. Uh, I, I don't care what it is, a piece of bread, a cracker, a cookie. You may not have anything, but sanctify it to the Lord and just do exactly what we're about to do now. The Bible says that he took the bread. He gave thanks. Father, we thank you for this bread. It's a demonstration to us of what you demonstrated on the cross. Your body being broken for us. You, bro you were broken. You were bruised. You were beaten for our sins. And we thank you for it, Father. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus, for going on the cross and, and, and taking everything that we should have taken. You took it for us. And we thank you. The Bible says that he broke it. Gave thanks, thank you, Father. And he ate all of it. Take you eat all of it. Likewise, he took the cup. And for those of you that are at home, you can do the same thing. Whatever you have, consecrate it unto the Lord. Bless it and sanctify it. This is a resemblance. It resembles the blood of Jesus Christ. 
The Bible says that without the blood, there is no remission of sins. If he hadn't bled, if he hadn't died, there'd be no remission of sins. But thank God he died for our sins. And he makes us worthy. Father, we thank you. We bless you for it now. In Jesus' name, take ye, drink all of it. Hallelujah. The Bible says that after they did the Lord's Supper, that they sang a song. We don't know what that song is, but we know that they celebrated the Lord's Supper. It was traditional for them to sing, and so we're going to sing something here today. We're just going to magnify the Lord. And if you will, just continue to worship him in your place, wherever you are, worship him. If you're at home, continue to worship the Lord. Worship him because he's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all glory and he's worthy of all honor. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Worship him in this place. Come on. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father. Thank you, Lord.
Good morning. Good morning, British Church of Alabama. Woo! Good morning. Good morning. My name is Kenya Pinnegar, and I will be before you to welcome any first-time guests. And I think it looks like we are all family in here. So give yourselves a good shout-out. Amen. Woo, 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 woo. All right, but if you're tuning in to our live stream for the first time, just drop a heart, drop a wave out there. Just let us know you're out there. We want to show you, share some of this love. Amen? All right. Um, and on behalf of our pastor, Pastor uh, Terrence and Latrilla Nolan, we want to welcome you to the Bridge Church of Alabama. Amen. Come on, Bridge Church. Let's give them a little bit more love. Woo, 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 woo. All right, all right. We also have a few announcements, so let me give out those announcements for you. So uh, let's celebrate our December birthdays. And the first one we celebrate is Sister Mary Clifton. Where did she go? She disappeared. <laughs> but anyway, we celebrating her. We celebrated her last night. We had a ball last night, but we want to celebrate her. Woo, 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 woo. And also, there she goes. <laughs> And also our own sister, Nicole Simmons. Woo! I know y'all don't see her face much because she's tucked behind that computer back there, but we know you back there, sis. <laughs> All right. Also, just a, a few notes. Um, the Women of Purpose monthly 12 Women of the Bible um, Bible study has been canceled for the month of December. But instead of doing the Bible study, we still will be meeting and we will be doing our Christmas cookie exchange. So if you would like to participate into in the uh, cookie Christmas exchange, it will be Saturday, December 10th at 11 a.m. here at the church. So if you would like more information on that, if you would see Mama Liz, Mama Liz, raise your hand. Back there, say, know who you are. <laughs> or Miss Debbie, who's sitting out in the foyer, or she may be in the classroom now with the kids, but... Um, and see and get more information and then also make sure you check your emails um, for the evite ladies let's make sure we're checking because they need us to RSVP by Wednesday December 7th so if you want to participate and be a part of that again check your emails uh, and answer the evites and by by Wednesday December 7th and let me put this out here because this is not just for those of us who are members or partners of the British Church of Alabama um, this is open to anyone who would like to participate so if we do not have your email please make sure that we get it so that we can send out the evite to you amen Amen. Um, also, men's ministry. Woo, woo, where y'all at? Okay, okay, y'all deep in here today. <laughs> you all's uh, uh, scheduled men, uh, meetings will resume in January of 2023. So, again, don't forget, uh, January of 2023, be looking out for the information for the men's ministry meetings. But again, like I said the last time, just because you're not meeting formally doesn't mean that you can't keep in touch informally. So make sure you're still reaching out to your brothers, checking on them and making sure they're okay. And that goes for the women as well. Even though we're doing other little things, um, I know sometimes when we're, we're so used to seeing each other in a certain setting, we don't we tend to not reach out when we're not having these things. So ladies, let's try to keep in touch as well, as well as the men. Amen. Um, the Secret Sisters. The Secret Sister gift exchange this year is underway. So all that is participating should have received your flyer information explaining how it works. So um, today was the first day to bring your first gift, ladies. Um, and you should have uh, followed the instructions on how to do that. Amen? Okay, so today, following the service today, make sure you check the table on your way out to ensure that you get your gift, all right? All right. Okay. Okay, ladies, is there any of the ladies that are participating in the gift exchange? She said, "Do you is, is there anyone out here who has any questions about it or make sure that you have put your gift in the room number 2. Not the first room coming in, but the second room coming in. Is there any questions, ladies? Has everybody done what they needed to do? We're all good. All right. Amen. Okay, so also um Regarding that as well, 
Um, let's make sure that when you do pick up your gift, also make sure you pick up your bag to bring your gift back next week. And then don't forget that the final gift is due the December 18th. Amen. And also, let me add this as well, um, because I know it's easy to get caught up in the gift giving part of it. Let's not forget that we're also supposed to pray for our sisters. Amen. All right. Also, our annual Christmas Appreciation Fellowship. You guys, I mean, um, let me tell you, last year was a blast, and all the family, friends, and family things we've had have always been a blast. So I advise everyone, 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 everyone to be here December 17th at 4 p.m. in order to just in, just be a part of it. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. And our theme this year is the ugly Christmas sweater. So come dress to impress, all decked out in your ugly Christmas sweaters. Um, <laughs> to take part in the festivities. Um, also, the festivities will include, again, this year, our um, White Elephant Gift Exchange. So if you would like to be a part of that as well, Mama Liz, raise your hand one more time. <laughs> Once again, see Mama Liz or Sister Debbie to get the information on that as well, okay? So we, it's always full, like I said, it's always full of laughter. We always have good fun, fellowship, and it's also an opportunity to get to one another get to know one another as well as far as outside of this church setting if if it were um in the form or i should say the formal church setting so it's just a time of fun and uh, fun and laughter we always play lots of games and have good time and um of course you know we always love to eat so there will be food available as well <laughs> all right so make sure you mark your calendars for all those events that were mentioned and then also don't forget our Bible studies every Wednesday night at uh, 6.30 Central Standard Time here at, the, uh, here at the church. Or you can tune in virtually online through our Facebook Live. And then also our co corporate prayer, I'm sorry, y'all. Corporate prayer is here at the church every first and third Saturday at 11 a.m. And then our Google Meet um, is every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. And again, any of these um, events that you would like to attend that you didn't uh, get all the information on, you can also look for them on our website at bridgechurchofal.com. Click on the events link and get more information. All right. Amen. And we will now have our offertory message. Good morning. Good morning. I heard Kenya say, there's Mama Liz in the back. This is Mama Liz. <laughs> All of those that were up front and couldn't see me, I'm Mama Liz. Amen. I am here this morning to give you uh, an offertory message just to encourage you to continue doing what we have been doing so faithfully. And I, as I was studying for this, I discovered that there are some things that your giving says about you. And so we want to look at that, you know, and see what it is, is how you give, why you give, your reason for giving. It says a lot about you. And so um, when we give our tithes and offerings, it should reflect a grateful heart. You know, it should make us be thankful for the things that God did for us. Everything that we have, it doesn't belong to us. It belongs to God. And he has trusted us to invest what he has given us wisely. Amen? And we don't have to think about how should I invest this. You know, in the world, when we invest things, you're concerned about the stock market. You can lose everything if you make a wrong investment. But we are God's investors, and he tells us exactly how we should invest. So we can't lose when we do it God's way. Amen? 
Amen. When we give, giving is a reflection or a condition of your heart. It depends upon how you give. I was thinking about, you know, in this society, we have so much. And we see things that somebody else has, and we want to up one. We want to up somebody else. I got to get one a little bit better than what you have. And we end up in a whole lot of debt. And that is not God's way. We shouldn't be like that. I was thinking about um, my son. He called me one day last week, and he said, Mom, I need an air fryer. Would you find me an air fryer? I said, sure. So I went, and I found one on Black Friday. It was on sale, $39. So I got the air fryer for him, and when I got home, I opened the box up, and I'm like, huh, this one's better than the one I have. <laughs> and you know, I kept looking at it. I said, I paid more for mine than I did for this. Now, I've got a perfectly good air fryer sitting over there on the counter. But I could not let my son have something better than I had. So guess what I did? No, he said, Mama, don't swap it out. I know you. I did. I went and I bought me one. Now there's two air fryers there. And, you know, that's the way we are. And that's not the way God wants us to be. I'm being transparent. I got two air fryers sitting there on the counter. When I get home, I'm going to clean one of them up, and I'm going to bless somebody with one of them. But I'm going to keep the other one, the last one. <laughs> well, anyway, you, and, you know, that made me think, you know, we always want to try to up one. We got to see somebody else with something. Mine is a little bit better than yours. And, you know, even when people are talking about their trials and their tribulations, People always got to have one, a story a little bit worse than yours. And that's not the way it ought to be. I mean, we need to be grateful. We need to have a grateful heart. And that's what God expects from us. And, you know, I, I was thinking about that scripture in Matthews, Matthews chapter 6. We're not going to go there, but everybody's familiar with that scripture about do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. And, and you know, I was thinking about that. God wants us lay up our treasures in heaven. Even though we have a lot, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And God wants our heart. All these things that we have here on earth, they're not going with us. They're going to pass away. Thieves and robbers come in and steal and take. But if your treasure is in heaven, that's an everlasting treasure. It's never going to fade away. No one can steal that. So that's what God wants us to do, is not to try to get a better air fryer than somebody else, but lay up your treasures in heaven, because that's where your heart is. Amen. Amen. And I also, during my um, reading, I discovered that giving is a reflection of your priorities. What, where are your priorities? Where do they lie? And the way that you give reflects that. I was thinking about the story about Cain and Abel. You know, Abel came, and uh, if you're interested in that, it's in Deuteronomy chapter 26. Abel came, and he gave an offering to the Lord. He gave the firstborn of his flock. But then Cain gave, came, he gave an offering too. They both gave offerings. But Cain gave some of the fruit from the fields of his land. God blessed Abel's giving, but he didn't bless Cain. Because Abel made God a priority. He gave God first, the first fruit. And so that we should always make giving a priority in our lives. We give God first, not what's left over. We don't sit down and think about, oh, I've got to pay this and this and this, and I'll return my tithes and offerings with what's left. No, God wants the first fruit because we can give and we wonder why things are still the way they are. Why aren't the promises of God being fulfilled in my life? Maybe you need to stop and look at the way you're giving, why you're giving, you know, because God's 
answer to everything is always yes and amen. And if we do it God's way, we can never go wrong. Never. God said he's never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Amen? So we need to just examine our hearts. Like Pastor said when he was doing the communion service this morning, he said self-examination. Before we give today, just look in your heart and see, why am I giving? What do I expect from this? You know, God said if we give, he's going to give back to us. Man will give back to us. Good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Are we seeing that in our lives today? And if we're not, then just examine yourself and see how is it that you're giving. Are you giving God's way? Or are you giving just to be seen? Are you giving just to say, oh, I gave this to the church? We are called to be co-laborers with Jesus Christ. And every time we give, do you realize that we are working together with Jesus for one purpose, and that is for his kingdom to be established here on the earth. When we give here in the church, when we have our friends and family days, we are co-laboring with Jesus. When we have movie nights, our outreach, all of those take finances, but all of those things can help to bring someone to Christ. That's the ultimate goal for all the things that we do here is that somebody else can see and experience Christ the way we can, the way we have, the way we are. Amen? Amen. So just stop and think about that before you give your offering today. Here at the Bridge Church of Alabama, we have several ways to give. You can text your donation to 84321, or you can visit our donation site at Bridge Church of AL churchcenter.com and you can give that way or you can visit our page our, on social media go to the Bridge Church of AL and go to our donate page click on that option and you can give that way so let's pray Father we come to you now in the name of your precious son Jesus we are so grateful Father for all the things that you have done for us and as a sign of our gratitude, Father, we desire to put you first. Examine our hearts, Father, and show us if there's anything there that you're not pleased with. And we will be faithful and just to correct it with the help of the Holy Spirit. Let our giving, Father, not be in vain, Father, because we want to give in a way that is pleasing and acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What's the words? Above. Yeah, want to make sure you're paying attention. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor T. I, I don't know. Did we have any first-time guests here today? Did we did not? Is everybody, we all family up in here? Man, I can take my shoes off, man. 
and chill out. Just somebody over here said, no, nah, don't, don't do that, Pastor. Don't do that. We family, but you know, you got to keep it 100. Man, thank you guys so much for being here today. And those of you that are joining us virtually, we thank the Lord for you. Uh, it's been an interesting weekend. Uh, this past uh, weekend, we had an opportunity to participate in the Opelika Parade. So I want to personally thank those that, that participated. Thank you so much. It was interesting. It was the first time that we actually had the opportunity to, uh, to be a part of it. And so we're just really grateful. I, I just find ourselves connecting more and more with the city of Opelika as God begins to open more and more doors. I uh, had an opportunity last night at, at, at uh, Sister Mary's birthday party. We had a chance to meet you know, some friends, some new friends as well in the ministry. And so God is really just uh, doing some awesome things. It was a wonderful time. Sister Mary, Brother Cliff, Cliff, man, you, you showed out last night, man. That was a wonderful party last night, man. You did a great job. You did a great job. And uh, to see y'all up there dancing, yeah, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. She danced. They danced. They had, a little, they had a little dance and everything. It was wonderful. And so it was just really uh, an, uh, an expression of love, and I'm sure... You know, uh, you, you got some points, man. You in there, boy. You got some points now, boy. You done made some deposits. You know, you can make a few withdrawals now, boy. You know, <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, I go buy me another car now. But <laughs> well, we had a wonderful time. It's been a great weekend, and I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just really overwhelmed because it's the people that, you know, I share my weekend, my time with, you know, it's just, you make the difference in my life. And so thank God for, for you all being a part of our lives. It, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. Uh, we, we, I know we have some things going on after service today. So uh, you guys ready for the word? Amen. Amen. I went home last night. I said, okay, Lord, what is it that you want your people to hear today? And so the Lord gave me something. So don't get mad at me. I'm just the messenger. You know what they say? Don't shoot the messenger. Yes. Something on my face? What? what this? <laughs> Fix it, babe. Don't just talk to me because I can't hear you. <laughs> I need to take this off. Is that what I need to do? Talk to me because, you know, we family. I said ain't nothing but look, we all family here today. We family. That's my wife, y'all. For those of you who can't see, my wife is over here saying, <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> So she did like three or four times. I, I didn't get the message. So, you know, eventually I got to talk. We got to communicate. Did I get it right? She said, <laughs> and she still ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Amen. Man, I got hot up here this morning. I don't know what it was with the Holy Ghost. Was it the Holy Ghost, sis? It was the Holy Ghost. Yeah, it was warm up in here. Was you home warm, bro? Yeah, it was kind of warm. Amen. Let's get into the Word. We got some time, man. I want to make sure that we... Uh, you say something? Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for, again, coming before you and allowing uh, me to be the vessel to be used uh, before your people. Um, I'm extremely humbled today, Father, that I am being used by you because I know, God, in this room, there's probably a multitude of people that can speak better than me, um, the memory is probably that much more sharper. But God, you still, in your grace and in, in your all sufficiency, you chose me and I'm grateful. And God, I pray, God, as I go forth, that I'll do the very best that I can do, God. But without you, I'm nothing. So I'm asking that your Holy Spirit will use me today and speak through me and that I'll just be used as a tool today that you be glorified in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your people that are here that are under the sound of my voice. God, I pray that they will hear your voice and not just mine only, and that your word, God, will penetrate their hearts, and that if they had not made a decision to do better, God, that through your word that they will do better, through your promises they will do better, through um, all that you are, and all that they know you to be, God, that they will make up their mind to do better. We will make up our minds to do better. And we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, let's get into the word. So good to see everybody here today. I am really grateful. 
Um, let's go. <laughs> I was going to say let's go, but she ain't even back there. <laughs> Nicole, let's go to Galatians chapter 6, uh, verse 9. I think I want to start there this morning. I'm, I'm going to be moving, and I'm not really certain how God's going to uh, move today, but I, I believe that we're going to begin with Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And um, let's go in the New King James Version. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Some of you may be familiar with this. And as I, as I, uh, those of you, well, you, you all know, know me by now, and I, I'm, I'm, pretty much unorthodox in terms of, of pastor, in terms of when I minister on Sundays. I'll call you out in a moment. I'll sometimes look for you for the answers. As you may be depending on me to give it to you, I'm going to be looking for you to give me some answers. And so uh, don't be surprised if I call you out today. I saw you cover your face, Elder. I ain't going to mess with you today since you cover your face. <laughs> Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And let us not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Stop right there. And let us not grow weary in well-doing. So we kind of like we understand what weary would be. You know, what to, you know weary, kind of like get tired. Let's not get tired in, in, in well-doing. My question to you today, though, is what is well-doing? What, what, is the, what is the writer talking about when he talks about well-doing? What's well-doing? Let us not be weary in well-doing. What, what's, how do we define well-doing? Anybody? Nobody? Let me, let me get my phone. Let me call a friend. <laughs> what's well-doing? Come on now, that's what I'm talking about, just doing what the Lord has required of us. I know this may sound somewhat uh, elementary, but we're going somewhere. You've got to trust me on this. And there may be somebody out there that really don't understand what well-doing is. And so well-doing is just basically it's just doing what God is requiring of us to do, well-doing. And don't get tired doing, doing well. Don't get tired doing those things that's required of us. And some people can do better than others. But the point that the writer is making is that whatever God has uh, uh, um, uh, holding you responsible for, don't you get tired in doing that? Because some of us have, have greater responsibilities than others. And so God, the Bible tells us that God will not allow much to be put on you than you can bear. He will not allow no more to be put on you than what you can bear, what you're able to handle. And so when it comes down to the responsibilities of what God is putting on you, he knows already what you can handle. He already knows it. He already knows whether or not you're going to become, he already knows whether or not you, you have the capability of doing well. But he, but he has to remind us, look, even though I've given you this task and I've given you this responsibility, I'm asking you, don't get weary in well-doing. Don't get weary in doing the things that, I, that I've given you because if you do, if you don't get weary, he said that, that you're going to reap if you think not. What happens when we do get weary, though? What happens? What normally happens when we do get weary? When we, when we feel like we don't want to give God our very best, but we decide that we want to just give him the bare minimum What's normally the results of that? Falling short. short. Somebody's what they say? Who said that? What you say, sis? We fall short. Anybody else? What happens when we don't give God our very best? Say it again. He adjusts your life. life. You said something, sister Mary? We We draw back. And so what we're able, what, 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 God has, what God's intention is for us to get the very best, but he can't give us the very best. He draws us back. So we can, he has the very best for us, but when we don't give him our very best, he, we draw back. And so now he can only give us what we have basically qualified ourselves to, get, to receive. And though his grace is sufficient and though he loves us, he's still not going to give us no more than, than what we, um, outside of his grace and his mercy, when, when, he has a, when he has given us a task or responsibility, he's saying, look, this is the responsibility I'm giving you, and I know that you can do better, and I'm requiring of you to do better. And if you do better, this is the reward. He says that he rewards those who diligently seek him. So to, to, to be diligent means that you're giving all you have, right? Right. And so when we when we don't give God our very best, then we, we sometimes we even compromise. We're, we're compromised. We're, we're, we're saying, well, you know, God, I'm not going to give you the very best. I'm not going to I'm not going to go five miles, but I give you two. 
God, I'm not going to give her the whole hundred dollars. I'm going to give her 50. When God knows what we're capable of. And when we compromise, we, we, we basically we, we are really not just hurting one person or another, but we're really hurting ourselves. So God is saying, don't compromise. There's so much more that I have to offer you. And if you compromise, I can't give you everything that, that you deserve. You all heard that story. That, uh, uh, it was a story about when you get to heaven and people, someone said that they were walking through this warehouse in heaven. And as they walked through this warehouse in heaven, they just saw this, all these packages with all these names on it. Yeah. And, then, and someone said that, uh, according to the, to the story, I guess it's St. Peter. And St. Peter says that these are all the blessings that, that people never got, never received because they didn't do what it was that God required of them to do. And then even some of those same packages had our own name on it. And so the person said, well, what about this package? What's in this package? Well, that's yours. And that seemed to be the biggest package up there with so many things that God still had, had, us, had, had our name on it, blessings with our name on it. But we never, were able to, we never got them because we just couldn't get there. We, we became weary and well-doing. Yeah. We backed down and we, we was like, God, I'm only going to give you. I'm tired. I'm tired today. I'm just going to give you what I got when God knows that we're able to give a whole, a whole lot more. And when we compromise, when, when, we, when we fall back, we settle and we settle. And then there's so many things that, we, that, that, that God is willing to give us. And we settle. We settle for it for the bare minimum. I was reading the story about um, you all familiar with the story about the 10 lepers. Let's go there, Nicole. Luke chapter 17. Um, let's go into King James Version. Luke chapter 17, verse 11, beginning with verse 11. It says, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Anybody know what a leopard is? Leopard. Leopard is someone, the Bible says this, well, my study, in my study, it says that a leopard, back in the day, if you read in Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 13, Leviticus chapter seven, uh, 13 and 14, it talks about Leviticus. I mean, it talks about a leopard. And only the priest could determine whether or not you had leprosy. Leprosy was a skin disease and so when they say that you have leprosy, it's really it's just a, 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 a common name for skin disease. And so the priests, if someone saw you with different sores and things like that on your body, they would send you to the priest. And the priest is the only one who had to determine whether or not you had leprosy. And so they would go through all this. It's a whole list of things that the priest would have to do to determine that you have leprosy. Once the priest says you have leprosy, you're outcast. And you basically become a part of a community where nothing but lepers are, are, are there. And so as the story goes on, Jesus walks upon a group of men, 10 of them, who had leprosy. And let's continue to read. And as he entered, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They lifted up their voices and cried out, Jesus, have mercy on us. Now, lepers... They were told that they would have to stand away, they would have to stay away, and that they could not come close to anyone, um, and they had to announce that they were unclean. So as people would walk up on them, they would have to announce, unclean, unclean, I'm unclean. So if, you, if, you, if their backs were turned or your back was turned, you would have to announce that you were unclean. When I thought about this leprosy, I thought about when AIDS and, and, and um, HIV first came about. And how everyone became afraid of that disease. Can you imagine if everyone who ended up with AIDS had to do the same thing? I have AIDS. I have AIDS. I'm unclean. I'm unclean. And even though they did not have to announce it, once it was known that this particular person had AIDS or had HIV, we stepped back. Treated them like they were outcasts. And it's the same way even when we think about COVID. Same way, right? We got COVID. Man, you better get back. Jack. But in today's society, we try to do a little bit better opposed to how it was back in, in the day of Moses and back in the day of Jesus. And leprosy was one of those things where they had to announce that they had something wrong. Yeah. And here the Bible says that they 
the only thing that they asked Jesus was, they said, have mercy. Jesus, have mercy. Have mercy on us. And so we continue to read. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. They were cleansed. And so Jesus sends them to the priest because the priest is the only one now that can determine that they're cleansed. No one else can make that determination. So before they can enter back into regular society, they had to be, no, had to be determined that they were cleansed. And, and the priests are the only ones, was the only one that, that was able to do that. And one of them, when he saw that he had, was healed, he turned back and with a loud voice, he glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. He was a Samaritan. I wanted to stop there because it's important that the Bible notes that he was a Samaritan. The Samaritans were people, and I, I think I did this in one of my, 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 my studies, before, one of my uh, teachings before. The Samaritans were people, when the Assyrians uh, raided northern, uh, uh, the king, northern kingdom of, of, of Israel, they, they, they outcast a lot of the Israelites. So the Assyrians, um, they brought in other different people from different regions. Those people ended up marrying some of the Israelites that end up staying in, in that region. They end up marrying them. And so when they, so now they became, as they call them, mixed breeds. And so a Samaritan is a, it's a mixed breed of Jewish and, and all other cultures. But the Jews don't recognize them as being Jews or being Jewish. They recognize them as being Samaritans, meaning that they're not full-blooded. And so the Jews and the Samaritans never got along. They despised one another. And so Jesus says, that he, he, he points out the fact that this one person that came back out of the ten, this one person was a Samaritan. See, back in the day when you had leprosy, it didn't matter who you were. It didn't matter whether or not you were uh, 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 black, white. Whether not you was old, young, gay, straight, he was like you know back in the day you were, you were, if you got leprosy you were you were you were it, don't matter, and you became a part of their culture, part of their society. And Jesus points out that this person was a Samaritan. The next verse, and Jesus answered, said, "Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save the stranger. And so he says, was there anything? Is it verse 19? And he said unto him, arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thy hope, made them, made, have made thee whole. He said, go thy way. Your faith has made you whole. As I read the story, I began to go a little bit deeper and dig into it. And God sent me back to the very first part of the verse, uh, what is it, uh, verse seven, uh, 11? Back to verse 11 or 12. Verse 12. And he says, as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Next verse. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. The only thing that they asked for was mercy. When Jesus was able to give so much more, they're only asking for mercy. And so when I think about the mercy, I'm like, wow, all they asking for was mercy. When God was able to give so much more, all they asking for was just mercy. Well, what is the mercy? When I think about the mercy, I think about the mercy of God. And the Bible tells me that God, the mercy is like, In the scripture where Jesus says that I reign on the just as well as the unjust. Well, that's how mercy is extended. Mercy is extended to any and everybody. And so what they were really asking for was no more than what God was able to give to anybody. They didn't ask for anything other than just mercy. Now, I'm not I am not short changing God's mercy. I thank God for God's mercy. As a matter of fact, God's bare minimum is greater than anything I can get from anybody else or, or even myself. God's bare minimum is better than my talents, better than my money, better than my wife, better than my life. God's bare minimum. And so when we look at his mercy, his mercy is, 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 is significant. 
But when I think about just them asking for just mercy, that's something that God just gives abroad anyway. All they wanted was just mercy. What was it that they were asking for? They were just asking for mercy. What? What's, what's mercy? What was mercy? Was, was, were they asking that? Because that, that, they, didn't, they didn't say healing. He didn't, they did not ask God, heal me. Jesus, heal me. Even though he was known to be healed. He said mercy. Jesus determined what mercy he was going to extend to them. And so he sends them off and says, go to the priest. As they went, the Bible says that they were, they began to, they, they were healed. They were healed. Demonstration of God's mercy. Sometimes we don't even know what we're asking for, but God extends, extends beyond what we're asking for. And he begins to heal them. The Bible goes on and it says that as, he, um, as they begin to heal, as they, as they were finding themselves in a place of healing, that only one turned back around. When I think about how just that one turned back around, you think about the other nine. I was reading in the story of story. It says that a man was walking and he saw a little boy. Uh, I take this back. The little boy and, and, and mother was walking and the man was selling fruit from a fruit tree. I mean, from a fruit, uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? A little stand, fruit stand. And the man bends down and he gives the little boy, you know, an orange. And the little boy, you know, takes the orange, and the mother says, well, what are you supposed to say, Johnny? What are you supposed to say? And the little boy turns back and look at the man, and look back, turns back, look at the man, and hands the man back the orange and says, now peel it for me. No gratitude, right? No, no, not thank you. The mom was saying, you know, say thank you. You know how we do. What you're supposed to say, say thank you. Well, the nine was just like that. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't bother to turn back around. They, they were like, they just wanted the healing. The little boy was no different, or they were no different from the little boy. All they wanted was just, you know, all, he, all they wanted was just the healing. Thank you, dear. Yeah. I don't know why it's getting warm up here again. So now, those ten, they were, those nine, they received their healing, but they kept on going. And all they received, and I say all, and, and, I, and I say this lightly, all they received was God's mercy, which was the healing. But the other one came back, and he went back to God. He came back to Jesus. And the Bible says that he, 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 when he got there, what did, he, what did the Bible say? He says that when, he, when, when the other one turned back around, and Jesus answered, go, go back to verse, uh, what was it, uh, verse 17? No, 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 verse 16? 15, verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back with a loud voice and glorified God. Let me stop right there. The first thing they, that, that, that God recognized was the fact, the first, well, the first thing that he recognized was, was who did the healing. He recognized, wait a minute, I'm healed, and I know who did it, and he recognized that. He, he recognized that he was healed, and he turned back. He says, I'm going to go back and thank whoever it was that healed me. I'm going back to thank him. He went back, and he said, with a loud voice, he glorified God. This is, and then when he goes on, the Bible goes on and says, what happened next? And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. He gave thanks regardless of what he was. He gave thanks. God don't even, Jesus don't even care who you are. He doesn't care where you're from. Doesn't care what you are, what you're made out of. What he expects us to do is to come back and give thanks. Come back and acknowledge who's, who's the blesser. Yeah. See, we, sometimes we just acknowledge the blessing, but we forget to acknowledge the blesser. And God expects us to come back and acknowledge his blessings and who was the blesser. And so the Bible says that a man, this, and they, what's so important is how there was something that led up to the very last verse in that. Number one, the Bible says that he came back and he, he, with a loud voice, go back to it, Nicole, with a loud voice, he glorified God. And one of them, when he saw that he was killed, turned back and with a loud voice, he glorified God. Number one, the first thing that you want to if you want to uh, uh, um, receive more than just God's mercy, you got to glorify God. The other thing that he did, he glorified God with a loud voice. 
with a loud voice, meaning that he wasn't ashamed. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power unto salvation. So he wasn't ashamed to glorify God. He wasn't ashamed to go back and give God glory. The second thing that he did, he said he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. Begin to thank God. I'm giving you glory, and I'm going to give you thanks. If you want more than just God's mercy, you got to glorify God, and then you got to thank God for what you've already got, what you received. He wasn't even asking Jesus for anything other than that. He just wanted to thank God for what, thank Jesus for what he has already done. What's the next thing? Verse 17. Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Continue. There are not found that return to give God, to give glory to God, save the stranger. This is the thing that sometimes you got to pull out, pull out. Jesus wasn't even asking why the nine didn't come back and thank him. He was asking why the nine didn't come back and thank God. He, he wasn't, Jesus wasn't even trying to get credit for it. He was just asking, where's the nine that should be coming back to give God glory? The only one decided that he was going to come back and give God glory. He came back to give God glory and said, where's the other ones to give God glory? Don't, do they not realize what God has done in their life? Save this one stranger. Next verse. And he said unto him, arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. This stranger, this Samaritan, he didn't stop at just becoming uh, uh, um, concerned with this God's mercy. He, he had received God's mercy. The healing was God's mercy. He received that. He, but, it, but it wasn't enough. He came back and thanked God. And, and Jesus turns back around and says, thy faith has made you whole. What's the difference between being made whole and being healed? What's the difference between being made whole and being made healed. Because th those nine, they probably assumed that they were made whole. Yeah. But really, all they did was receive a physical demonstration of the power of God. Right. They were not made whole. They were just healed. Yeah. And see, when we stop at just giving God the bare minimum, when we stop and we, we, when we, when we feel like, like you know, we, we, we're, we're going to become weary and well-doing, yeah. We're settling for just God's mercy, and we're settling for just the healing. And there's a difference between being healed and being made whole. So when God tells us, don't settle for just being weary, don't, don't be weary and well-doing. He said, but give, give me the very best that you have. And when you give me the very best that you have, he said, I'm able to, 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 to make you whole. Well, what is being made whole? I ask you, what's the difference between being healed and being made whole? Well, being healed is just a physical demonstration of what happened. They were healed from leprosy, but it doesn't mean that their life changed. It doesn't mean that they were, even though they may have been allowed to go back into society, they may still not have the job. They may still didn't have no loved ones. They, they, were, they were still probably outcast, but not outcast. Still outcast, but not outcast. But when God made you, made him, made, when Jesus made this man whole, he was more than just healed. Yes. Everything about his life yes. became whole. Everything was restored. Yes. He became whole. And so this is what God is trying to tell us, that when we, when we come to him, we must, number one, come to him recognizing who's the blesser. When we recognize who the blesser is, then we need to come and, and glorify him yes. with a loud voice. And when we glorify him with a loud voice, don't be ashamed of who the blesser is. You know, a lot of times, you know, people compliment us on, on what we got, the, the new car, new clothes. Oh, that's such a nice clothes, a, a nice shirt. We're like, oh, it ain't nothing. Oh, that's a nice car. When'd you get it? Oh, man, this old hoopty. And we don't give God the credit that he's due. And God is blessing us. And God is saying, no, 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 no. You ought to give the, you ought to come back and, and, and glorify me for even the small things. Yeah, he's able to, to bless us and his mercy is sufficient. But he said, I can do a whole lot more. Yes. I can do so much more. So I consider being made whole. Being made whole takes me to a place where I'm recognizing that the favor of God is on my life. See, this man received, when he was made whole, he received God's favor. 
And God's favor will take you further than any money can take you. God's favor will take you further than your talents. God's favor can take you so much further. It does so much more. So much more. And when we're limited, God's favor makes us unlimited. When we're limited, it, it takes us to places further. God's favor does this. Go to John chapter 14. My God, John chapter 14. Um, go with the uh, 12th verse in the uh, New Living Translation. No, New King James Version, Nicole, please. It says, most assuredly, I say to you, this is Jesus talking. He said, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And then he goes on and says, what? And greater works than these he will do until I go to my father. He says that you'll do greater works. Who's he talking to? He's talking to the believer. He's talking to those that have accepted him, those that, that, that didn't settle for just the mercy. He's talking to those that settled, that settled for, his, for, for his favor. Those that, are, that, those that belong to him, who has, his, that has, has favor on their lives. He said, I'm, look, you not only will you just do the bare minimum, he said, you're going to do greater than that. You're, gonna, you're able to do even greater. Why? Because, uh, because you have recognized God. You're, you're recognizing the blesser. And you're giving the blesser the glory. He said, you're going to be able to do greater things. That's what the God's favor on your life does. He causes you to do greater things, meaning that you're able to do above your own ability. The greater. You're able to do above your own ability. Yes. I, that's what I'm looking for. I, I love the fact that God's mercy is upon us, but God's mercy is upon everyone. Yes. Who was, he, I mean, he says he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. So his mercy is extended to everyone. But when we're talking about God's favor, yes. that's what I want. Yes, I want his mercy and his favor. Yes, I, want, I don't want to just be healed. But I want to be made whole. Because when I'm made whole and I'm able to do above and beyond all that I can, I can ask him above and beyond all that I can think. I can ask him for those things. And he said he'll do greater, greater things. And I'll be able to do greater things. You'll be able to do greater things in your life because of the, the, because of the wholeness, because you've been made whole. So what I loved about the story is that, that that one man came back. But not only was he restored, not only was his health restored, but he was able to do greater things now. He went back into society. I don't know what, the, what, what his story ended up, what ended up happening with his story, but I can imagine that if he was made whole, this man became great. Wherever he did, whatever he did, everything he set his hands to do, it prospered. He was like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I believe that. Go to uh, Psalms chapter 1 in the King James Version, uh, in the New King James Version. This is what I believe happens when, we, when we're made whole. One and one. He said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and his law he med- and, his, and his law, he meditates day and night. Verse 3, this is it. It gets powerful right here. He says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf, look at this, also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does, it shall prosper. That's the difference from being healed and being made whole. That whatever you do is going to prosper. Let's look at verse 3 in the New Living Translation. It says, there are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Each season. Now, you know, when you go through certain seasons, you can't bear fruit. Certain seasons, your fruit get cut off. But God says that if you're, if you're made whole, you're going to bear fruit in every season. It doesn't matter what season you're in. You're going to bear fruit. You're going to be fruitful. And he says that your leaves never will wither and they will prosper in all that they do. Your hands going to prosper in all that you do. That's the difference between being made whole and just being healed. Just receiving God's mercy and receiving God's wholeness. So I'm, 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 I'm suggesting to you that you don't just settle. Don't just, just do, just, let's not just, let's not become weary and well-doing. 
Let's, let's you know, press on. <laughs> so I think it was Paul. He said, I press toward the prize. I press toward the prize of the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. That's, that's not becoming weary. And I know sometimes we get tired. We do. But God says that his grace is sufficient. His, his grace is sufficient. He told Paul, he said, Paul, the Bible says that he went to Paul. Paul went to him three times and said, God, take this thorn away from me. Take it away. Take it away. Take it away. And God said, my grace is sufficient. I'm going to keep that thorn there because I know what you're made out of. I know what I put in you. I know what you're capable of doing. I know what you're capable of doing. And I expect God expect us not to become weary and well doing. He expect us not to. He knows. He knows what we're capable of. Amen. 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 Anybody in here weary today? Are you weary and well doing? Are you tired of doing the work that God has God has placed in your life? Because if you're weary, I'm gonna pray. We're gonna pray for you. We don't want you to leave out of here weary and tired and feeling like you're useless. That there's nothing left. God's got God's got so much more in store. We haven't even tapped into it. But if we settle for just his mercy, we'll never see the best. We'll miss out on all those additional blessings like that man got, that one man who was healed with the leprosy who turned back around. He received so much more. If we settle for just, just the bare minimum, that's all we're going to end up with. And if our lives have not changed from the time we've given our life to Christ and our lives are still the same, then we need to go back and check. What are, what are we doing? What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? Or have we given God, are we giving God our very best? I said it earlier. He blesses those. He, he blesses. He rewards those who diligently seeks him. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And I'll, I'm going I'm to stop right there. Hebrews 11, verse 6. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seeks him. Let's look at it in the King James Version. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You got to diligently seek the Lord. Sometimes you got to put forth, you got to put forth more than just the bare minimum. I know we expect so much from God, but God's like, you got to give me more than just the bare minimum. Yes, you go, if you go to work for somebody, you expect a paycheck. They expect you to give them the very best you have. And if you plan on getting promoted in that job or in that field, you got to go above and beyond what you're getting paid to do. They're not going to promote you and then say, okay, now that I promoted you, now you can do more. No, they expect you to do more, and then they're going to promote you. They're going to elevate you based on what you're given. And Jesus, is, God, is, God is not really too much different in terms of how he created us. He, he's going, he wants, he expect, uh, he expect out of us what he has put in us and what he knows we're capable of doing or, or capable of being. He knows. Amen. 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 Anybody weary and well-doing today? Amen. Well, let's stand on your feet. If you ain't weary, then you, I mean, you got enough strength to stand on your feet. <laughs> Come on, let's stand up. Amen. Greater things will you do if you don't become weary and well-doing. Just know that God is able. God is able. Yep. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word today. Now, God, it's a time in the service where we extend um, the opportunity for those that have never given you their life. We extend to them the, the, the opportunity for them to, to come and seek your face. And that will be between them and you, Father. We thank you, Father, that... Um, that your mercy is sufficient, your grace is sufficient. But we recognize today that you have so much more that you would love for us to have. And for the sinner man, God, that may be under the sound of my voice, I pray, God, that today you will show him that his life can be that much more better, that much better if he gave his life to you. 
I pray for those that are rededicating their life to you today, God, that they are that they're, they're, they're in a place or in a position today where they're going to do like uh, you requested the rich man to do that. They're going to sell all they have, God. They're going to give up everything that they have for the kingdom. They're going to just fully commit to you today. That maybe it was something that they didn't do from the initial start of them serving you, but today they're going to give you their entire heart. We ask this, Father, that as you're going to deal with both the sinner man and the person God is rededicating their life today. Now, for those of you who have never given your life to Christ, you can do this. You can say this prayer with me. It's a prayer of salvation. Vote for those that are rededicating their life today. You can do that as well. It's a simple prayer. Say this prayer with me. Father God, you know my life, and you know how I've lived it. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. I believe in your son. His name is Jesus. He died on the cross for me. They buried him in a tomb. But on the third day, he rose from the dead with all power in his hands. That power is what saves me. Thank you, Father, for saving me and giving me new life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, amen. Can we applaud those that may have given their life to the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Um, for those that may be considering becoming a part of this ministry, um, see me after church service. If there's someone who requires additional prayer, um, just whatever it is, see me after service. Amen. Amen. Just want to extend that. Come on, sweetheart. You got anything? No? No, oh, man. Do the benediction. Mm-hmm. Where's your mic at? What you do with your mic? Why are you hiding your mic? You got the gray mic, bro. There you go. Hey, man. I hope everyone enjoyed the word today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word that has gone forth today. We pray that as we go about our week, that as we continue to uh, to strive to continue to be pleasing in your sight, that you will strengthen us by your spirit. We pray that we go forth and uh, have our loins girded about with your word. Father, I thank you, Lord, that when our heads are cast down, that you will lift them up. Yes, Father, I pray right now that you would believe with, be with these, your people. Bless them today, Father. And as they leave this place, I thank you that you anoint them anew, oh God, yes. that they may continue to run the race that is set before them. Bless their homes. Father, I thank you that this week, Father, will be a week of increase in every area. I yes. pray, oh God, that, that they will be able to manage everything that is of you. I thank you, Father God. We just give you praise, glory, and honor for this day with that you have blessed us with. In your precious son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Love you guys. God bless you. I'm Pastor T, Pastor Latrilla. You guys know what's up. We're out. God bless you. I want to remind the ladies uh, to stop in the foyer area if you are participating in the Secret Sister and pick up your gift on the way out. <laughs>